comments on the last video. So this video we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Instead of discussing equipment, we're going to be discussing uh, sort of a do-it-yourself project. So it was in, uh, I was in Photoshop class, uh, second to last class. Uh, we just got finished. And so we're discussing some last minute things that we might want to know about before we all uh, go our separate ways. And we're discussing uh, what one student uh, affectionately termed, how do you get the balls of light in your picture when you're shooting uh, photography at night? And so we discuss how to get a good bokeh and how you know the more expensive lenses affect bokeh and stuff. And then I started to uh, get into the discussion about how to change the shape of your bokeh for artistic effect, like you uh, sometimes see on Instagram. So what I made to show the students but never got around to actually bringing into class was what I call the Bokenator. It's basically a little device that you slip on the end of your lens, shoot at wide aperture, and with the little removable discs, you can change your shape without having to take everything off the camera and you're not putting sticky adhesive tape on your expensive camera lens. So, Let's get started making your very first Bokenator. You're gonna to wanna to gather your materials. What I'm using for the body and faceplate and discs on the bokeh is a cheap cardboard from a 12-pack fridge size of a well-known soft drink brand. It makes a pretty good material. You're gonna want a very, very sharp knife. Ooh, all right, that's sharp some sort of a writing implement. I prefer Ticonderoga, Dixon brand, and then a very, very good stout pair of scissors. And something you don't mind cutting on and getting kind of screwed up. So the first step you're gonna do is you're gonna cut yourself off, oh, about a 10 inch long piece of the longest side of the box, avoid any joints, uh, anything like perforations, uh, glue strips, anything like that. And then you're gonna cut an inch about, depending on your lens, I would say two to two and a half inches. You don't want it to sit fully flush against the camera body because then it will be uh, sitting too far in front of the lens and the bokeh won't fully form when you, when you need it to. You want the face plate and the little bokeh disc that you're gonna make later to sit flush against the front element of the lens. So here you see I've already started to cut my strip. And once I cut my strip, we will form it into the barrel of the Bokenator, the round part right here, and then we will tape it. One thing I forgot to mention, you are going to want to have some good quality masking tape. So here's our tube. I wrapped it around the lens of my camera. It's got a firm fit, but it's not too firm. A nice friction fit. Goes around the camera lens, slides down easily, and then lifts off. So there we go. Now I'm going to show you how to make the base plate. Just make sure you reinforce tape on the outside and the inside. I'm gonna put a little bit more tape. I just wanted to get this to show you the form. And then we're gonna move on to the face plate. So here's what I have so far. As you can see, I have a pre-made bokeh disc, and all I did was I traced the size of the bokeh disc, and then went in about centimeter, centimeter and a half, which is approximately the same size as my actual uh, lens uh, element on the end. And so what the vertical lines are, is they are placed there because that's where you're gonna put your slits that are going to securely hold your bokeh disc in place in front of the camera lens. It's just a simple friction fit, isn't anything complicated. You can put tape on it if you want, but uh, if you do it right and use a very sharp knife, it should be a nice pressure fit, and the bokeh disc should not move at all during uh, your little arty adventure. So I have cut the central hole in the face plate. I've made the little slits. As you can see, it's, it's holding the bokeh disc pretty good. If you want it to hold it a little better, you can tape up uh, some of the top of the slit a little bit and that will increase tension and pressure uh, on the bokeh disc and make it uh, a little more firm in, in the frame here that we built. Now it's time to attach the tube. So here we have our assembled product. You can see the bokeh disc being held in by the slits. You can see the tube is held on 
with a copious amount of tape. Um, this is just a mock-up that I'm making, but if you wanted to use more tape, I would say go ahead and do it. Um, once you get everything positioned, you can trim the faceplate down to be a little bit more aesthetically pleasing and smaller, more like this one. So it's not so huge and sticking up all over the place. And then you need to cut yourself some bokeh discs. And what you do for that is, you know, we got this handy tape here. This isn't what I use, but this would be a nice size for a bokeh disc. You just trace it out, cut out five or six discs, find the exact center by drawing an X, and then uh, start working on your bokeh cutout. What you want to keep in mind though is depending on the aperture and the lens that you have, you want your bokeh, uh, your little bokeh hole here, your star, whatever it is, to be smaller than the aperture that you're using. The aperture that I have on this camera, my uh, D3200, only goes down to 3.5 and uh, that is probably not going to produce good results with this size of a, uh, a bokeh slot or hole. So I would have to make a, a bokeh disc that has a smaller shape in order to get it into the center of the lens and to actually provide the uh, aperture effect that you're looking for. Technically this bokeh disc is now going to serve as our aperture so the light coming through when it's unfocused, like say in the background, you have some Christmas lights and you're taking a portrait of someone, they're going to take on the shape of the aperture and that's how you end up getting the bokeh effect. So here it is, didn't take too long. All it took was you drinking a 12 pack of soda, a nice pair of scissors, an extremely sharp knife, a writing implement, some good tape. If you do not have an extremely sharp knife, please don't use a dull one. You will slip, cut a finger off, I'm not responsible. What you need to do is switch over to an X-Acto knife. It's much safer for someone who's not very experienced using knives. Um, so stay tuned, I'm going to throw up some pictures I took with my actual Bokinator, this guy here. Just to show you some of the good results that you can get from uh, this very cheap and little handy device. So there you have it, Michael Hammer's Bokinator, portable bokeh creating device. You can have as many discs as you want. You can cut all sorts of different shapes, uh, depending on what you're looking to do and what uh, artistically pleases you. And this doesn't cost you uh, hardly a cent, maybe, maybe three cents. But I saw similar products on Amazon.com with uh, replaceable discs, and while they may have more professional results with uh, the cutouts and stuff like that, it's just not as fun and it's not as original. Nobody's going to have the exact shape that you cut out. Nobody's going to be able to exactly reproduce the images that you took. And that's something that needs to stay in photography, even if it is digital. Things tend to get a little bit too repetitive and, and regimented. And uh, we tend to lose a bit of the art of photography and the art of doing it yourself and making your own mods and uh, equipment. So hopefully that'll bring this back for uh, some of you and uh, let me know in the comments below and uh, post some of your pictures. Throw me your links to your imagers and stuff, and uh, I'd like to, I honestly want to see what you were able to capture and uh, how it helped to uh, improve your art. As usual, like and subscribe, and uh, you'll see more videos.